Now, you probably can tell me what, where this would happen. And I know if I square three, that will equal nine. And if I square a negative three, that will also equal a positive nine. So there's actually two solutions with this. And this piggybacks on what I said before is whenever you have a quadratic, so whenever you have an x squared term and you solve for x, there will be two solutions. Now, sometimes that's the same number, right? But um, you can always, and that's called what's called a multiplicity. Um, so you can sometimes have that, but just know that that's possible. So we're doing the reverse here. We will take the square root of both sides. But because of the fact that I could have either a positive 3 here. Oops. Not what I meant to do. Because of the fact that I could have a positive 3 here or a negative 3, whenever you take the square root of both sides, you must make that plus or minus the square root of 9. And then I take the square root of 9, and your answer will be plus or minus 3. Now, in my math lab, they very much want you to write them out like this. You must write those equations out twice. Three C. So this three C is two X squared plus 72 is equal to uh, zero. Now, First thing I want to go ahead and do is subtract 72 from both sides. When I get this, I have 2x squared is equal to negative 72. And that negative makes me go back and look at the directions. And I go back and look at the directions, and the directions say solve, include imaginary solutions. So I can just go ahead and finish working it with this. Now, when you're taking the square root of both sides, you always want to isolate the x squared per part first. So the first thing I'm going to do is before I take the square root, and I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And that just goes ahead and eliminates a step on the other end of having to take the square root of 2. So now this leaves me as x squared is equal to 72 divided by 2, just gives us negative 36. And now when I take the square root of both sides, always remember you have to put that plus or minus on, the, on that side. The square root of x squared is just equal to x. And I taught you to always, when you ever have that imaginary number, always take that out first. So that's going to be i times the square root of 36. And again, any number that comes out of that radical always goes in between the plus and minus and the square root of 36. So be very careful where you go through and uh, place that. Or your final answer would be x is equal to plus or minus 6i. And again, my math lab will write, make you write that out as 6i and uh, minus 6i. Now, believe it or not, we've had these kind of questions before. We had this question way back when we were doing chapter 6. But now there's a new way to go ahead and do this. Can you see the iPad now?
Okay. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take the square root of both of those sides. On the screen. You're getting the foggy piece? All right, how do I do this? Okay, there we go. All right, so I, you see how I took the square? Uh, go, go away. There it goes. Um, I took the square out of both sides, and I can do that because all of this is quantity squared. So now I just have x minus 5 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 25. Now at this point in time, I'm going to simplify the square root and have that be plus or minus 5. But when I do that, I need two different equations. One of them is going to be x minus 5 is equal to the positive side of this. And then the other one is going to be x minus 5 is equal to the negative portion of this. So to solve this one, I add 5 to both sides and I get x is equal to 10. And over here, I also add 5 to both sides, and I know this is weird, but x is just equal to 0. So my two answers are 10 and 0. Now, we should probably go back and check those. So our check for this is 10 minus 5 squared does that equal 25, which was our original? And yes, 5 squared is equal to 25. And now if I go through and check the 0, 10 minus, oops, that would be actually 0 minus 5 squared. Does that equal 25? Yes because negative 5 squared is equal to a positive 25. So both of those go ahead and work. Now, does every, anyone see what the super long way of doing this is? It will also give you an answer. The super long way would be to take this, come down, and take that x minus 5 squared is equal to 25, and then multiply this up out by writing it out twice. Which will give me x squared minus 5x minus 5x plus 25 is equal to 25. And then I would subtract 25 from both sides. And then I would just be left with x squared minus 10x is equal to 0. And this one is a GCF factor. And you get the same answer either way. What happens is when we took the square root of both sides, it's just going to be 5x minus 3 is equal to the plus or minus the square root of 48. Now the square root of 48 doesn't have a perfect square, so I go ahead and ask myself, is 48 divided, divisible by 4? And it is, it's divisible um, in 12. But remember, if anything's ever divisible by 4, also always check to see if it's divisible by 16. And it is. So then I go ahead and rewrite that 48 
as plus or minus the square root of 16 times 3. The square root of 16 comes out as a 4. And remember that number, any number that comes out of a radical always goes in between the plus and minus and the square root symbol. It's really important you put it there. Now I have 5x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus 4 square root of 3. Now, this is where it's really important to pay attention to where everything goes. So when I add 3 to both sides, I cannot add 3 with 4 square root of 3 because they are not like terms. Also, because how am I going to deal with that with that little plus or minus inside there? So all I do is I write it over as 3 plus or minus 4 square root of 3. Do not combine the 3 and the 4. You cannot do this. Um, it may help you a lot when you're thinking about this as to putting that three, 4 square root of 3 in parentheses to remind you not to go ahead and add or subtract anything there. And then the last thing is because this 5 is being multiplied times x, I go through and I divide both sides by 5. And then I'm left with x is equal to 3 plus or minus 4 square root of 3 all over 5. And then unfortunately for my math lab, you must write that out twice. I understand if we were in the classroom, I would just tell you to write it out once and I would take that answer, but that is not the options that we have right now.